I've been struggling with whether to talk about this very specific incident at the very beginning or the very end, and I've decided I'm going to talk about it at the end of this video, which kind of sparked this video. But I will say, right up front, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit of background information as to why I started vlogging in the first place and making videos, because it's very relevant to some criticism, uh, criticism, which is more like flaming and trolling, that I got on Reddit this morning that initiated me to make this video. Um, and the other thing that I'll say right now, which I'm going to repeat later, is that I do not make YouTube videos to attempt to get famous. Um, that is not the function and purpose, that is not my intent of why I do this. It's not to get money, it's not a job for me, I'm not trying to make a career move, I'm not trying to get everyone in the world to look at it and be like, look at me. Um, and, and get all the subscribers ever, like for a bunch of reasons. I've talked about this at least twice before. One of those times is probably in this section, which is behind the curtain. I've mentioned it other places. I don't remember whether it was just in a vlog as a comment or whatever. I know I've mentioned it a couple times. So if you haven't watched that, if you haven't listened to that, because now I am putting this in podcast format, and I know there's a couple people who, who listen to the podcast now that don't actually watch any of this stuff. Um, but the, uh, the very short version is there's a YouTuber named John Hicks. Um, I shouldn't just call him a YouTuber. He does other things. But he rides BMX a lot. He lives in L.A. He's a great photographer, videographer. Um, that was kind of his, his job for a while in his career and something he loves to do. He combined, combined that with his passion for BMX and riding and just living in L.A. Uh, I really enjoyed his video. I started watching him a couple years ago. Really liked it. Um, I really enjoyed the most when he was talking to his audience. And I don't think that's, a, that's, that's not what a lot of people enjoyed. Uh, they were just like, I just want to see BMXing in the city. I just want to see you go into like gang zones and stuff. And that was the things, that was the videos that attracted me initially. I just like saw like riding in gang zones or something because I, I subscribed to a couple of BMX uh, focused channels and somehow that came up as a suggested thing and I was like, I was kind of got into it through there, but I like the other content more. Um, I've always been a little fascinated by like just learning people's stories in a way, not in like a person to person scenario, but just like watching like when Kev Jumba was vlogging, I really enjoyed his stuff. Sometimes it was really humorous, but sometimes he would talk about his personal life and some serious stuff. Um, and that's what I really like. So anyway, so John Hicks planted a little seed. I eventually started mountain biking like um, not even a year and a half ago yet, but a little over a year ago. And I was just thinking like, it'd be really cool to show people these trails. I, <clears throat> I take pictures on the trails sometimes, but as I get better at riding trails, I don't need to get off my bike as much on like these climbs. So I like a lot of the times I would only take a picture if I was, had to get off my bike. I wouldn't get off my bike to take the picture. It was just like, oh man, like I can't make this climb. I gotta get off my bike. While I'm off my bike, I'll take a sweet picture of where I'm at. So I, I, yeah, I just thought like, I wanted to show people, especially like my, my family or whatever, like, man, this is beautiful. Lethbridge is beautiful. I'm experiencing it through biking, like the, not obviously the city part of it, but I'm experiencing this part of Lethbridge and the coolies and stuff through biking. So I really would like to share that and, and just show people the beauty that I get to see. That was the one catalyst. Last summer, I was also incredibly focused on mortality and legacy and my own anxiety and how all those things play together. So um, I ended up being like, you know what? I think that I would make a vlog. I think that I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna start vlogging. Uh, I'm gonna start talking to the camera. Um, I realized something a long time ago is that when I speak with people, I, I have the, like the filter between what I'm thinking and saying is like, it narrows down so much when I'm ver like verbal. Uh, if I'm typing, if I'm writing, it's it, it's a slower process to actually do that physical action. So therefore, I have more room to filter out what am I actually going to say. How will that be? Um, how will that be received by my audience, whoever might read this, um, or or whatever? So. I've just found that whenever I spoke in a group, I learned a lot about myself. I learned about the subject I was talking about, not because they were telling me new things necessarily. I just learned how I felt about stuff a lot because I 
didn't have this filter on as much, and, and some people would call that external processing, where I learn by expressing myself, and, and that makes complete sense to me, and, and therefore, um, yeah, I started to, to really learn that, oh, if I do that, just in a, like, I've got no one to interrupt me, I've got, I don't have to wait for someone else to speak, I don't have, like, and it's not that that's all that a conversation is for me, if I'm really genuinely interested in what the person is saying, I want to listen to them, but this way, when I speak to the camera, I just get, just, blah, 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 blah. that's what I get, um, and that's what you get, and sometimes I go way off the rails, but I mean, every time I've had a conversation, I've walked away with knowing myself a little better, sometimes, like, big revelations, I'm like, wow, I didn't realize I thought about it that way, I didn't realize I felt that way, other times not so much, but exploring an idea definitely happens sometimes, so, um, yeah, that was, I just wanted to like, and have, having these like video journals, I mean, I keep them on a hard drive for me as well. Um, I don't know if that'll be something that I ever look at in the future or if, again, this is, it was, just, it was about legacy a little bit too, right? So it was like, this is something that maybe someone else sees one day uh, later on in the future if they want to learn about me. And this is also a way I get to talk to a lot of people that I just, I don't know. Like, I don't talk to my mom enough on the phone. I like, there's family members in, in Chile, I have so many cousins and, and, and whatever else that I never speak to. I know that there's at least one of them that watches every once in a while because they started mountain biking as well. Um, and, and they know enough English that they can probably understand some of the conversations and vlogs and whatever. And they get to kind of see how I live a little bit. I'm really interested in that. Like if my friends and family didn't, like I've just been like a social media, like whatever. Uh, it's It's definitely, I haven't been balanced with my my social media very well, like my output. I like expressing myself a lot. Um, I really like seeing what other people are doing a lot. I wish m more of my family and friends documented what they were doing because I'm like, I'm not there with them to experience it. And sometimes like getting to see that documentation really inspires me to just be like, man, I, I want to be doing better. I want to like, and that's what like a lot of the, you know, I choose who my friends are. And it's like those people do inspire me with the things that they do. Um, and then when we do get to talk about it, it's great. Uh, we just don't get to talk about it enough. And I don't see them in person. So anyway, I'm, that's just another thought that I have that I'm doing this and some people get to experience, like, I don't, I don't know. They just get to experience what I'm doing if they're interested. So that, yeah. So now I'm going to break down each video just like shortly here. Because this, again, goes back to this comment at the end that I'm going to talk about. And also to the beginning where I was like, my function is not to get famous on YouTube. That is not my purpose, uh, which should be obvious. But I mean, I just had this thing with John Hicks and I was like, yeah, I started mountain biking. If I got a GoPro, like I could show people those videos. That would be so cool. And I could like share the beauty of Lethbridge. And then I was like, yeah, I, I'd like, oh, maybe I'll vlog. Like that would be kind of cool. Like just to document that stuff and have this, this kind of journal of my activities and my thoughts in a way so those were the main purposes i started doing these art process videos because when i make art sometimes people have questions like how did you do that and i'm like here you go like sometimes people buy a piece and and, and like and now that the art process video is there like there's someone who bought a, a couple pieces of mine they're like yeah we watched it together like we me and my like kid like watched this art process video um for the piece that i bought from you and i was like that's super cool like it doesn't take a lot of effort for me to film that and then edit it and whatever, like all the videos I do, when there's a lot, I mean, it takes up time, yes. It, it took some effort to really learn what I was doing for a bit, yes. But I mean, I see the value in that. Like some people wanna know how I make something, art process video. You wanna see biking, you know, like it's, it's not so much about the biking. I'm gonna come back to that in a second. This behind the curtain thing happened because I realized the act of filming these things for me changed my behavior a bit and also I'm just, like this topic is coming up now, like the criticism and how that affects me. Uh, that's what we're getting to with this. I mean, the conversations I've already talked about, that's like an external processing thing. It really helps me a lot. The two cent rants were just more like, kind of more of the same. They were just angrier and shorter generally than a conversation. And I got to like, just rant about stuff that was upsetting me. Um, yeah, I, 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 I feel like I'm missing some, oh, reviews. Like I started doing reviews is a fun thing too. <clears throat> um, just because it was just, I, I learn a lot, but well, I mean, not when I review gum or something that I think that was like the first one I did, like, 
Thrills gum that tastes like soap. But I mean, uh, movies, especially albums, I've been doing that recently, or just like podcasts. I just like sharing the things I like. I like to pass on things, and sometimes people really enjoy the things that I enjoy, and I'm like, yeah, I'm really cool, glad I got to show you that cool thing, because you like it too now. Like, podcasts, I've done some reviews there with the, the albums that I'm reviewing now that are really important to me. I get to go back in and be like, why is this so important to me? Why is this on my top 10 list? How does it make me feel? And I get to, to kind of bathe in nostalgia for a bit sometimes, which isn't always healthy. But I get to just examine myself and my relationship to that thing that I, that I have. Um, so, I mean, a lot of this is for my own purposes, self-examination. And you could say, well, if you're just doing it for yourself, then why are you putting it up? Well, because someone else might get value from it. It might spark an idea. Um, I've had an old friend texting me. Now that they're listening to the podcast, they're probably the only one who's listening to the podcast right now. But, um, and, and with a lot of the things I've been talking about recently, they've listened to it and they've been like, oh, wow, like, they start talking to me about it and it generates their own ideas about my, the subject that I brought up. Um, and I mean, that's cool too. If I can inspire some thought, uh, if people have questions, if people start to think about it in relation to themselves, they relate a bit, whatever, that's super useful too. I enjoy that. So, um, like I said, I was going to get back to the mountain bike thing because that's where this thing really, this comment that I got was about a mountain bike video. So I'm not, you know, sharing these, I'm not filming mountain bike videos of me just like being super gnarly and sick on a trail. I'm not a good rider yet. Like I'm still just like, I'm just riding for fun and to clear my head and make me less anxious. And to, I mean, all of that ties into seeing the beauty around me, being in nature, uh, focusing on one thing. It's like a mindfulness activity. There's so many things I get attached to it and then it gets cliche and whatever. But um, I just love being on my bike. So whatever, I film it, I share that with people. Um, I, I, I have the, the opportunity is there for someone to watch it. No one has to watch it, right? And it's not about like, yeah, this I'm the sickest rider ever, uh, watch me ride. It's not about me at all. It's usually like 99.9%, .9 it is about like the reason I, I film it and edit it and share it is to show the beauty of Lethbridge, to show the beauty of the trails. Um, that was its intention. There's like a couple things, like on my birthday, I was like, I'm gonna like ride down this like sick thing and watch me die. Uh, and I had a little crash. And I mean, that one was about me. It wasn't about the beauty of the trails, but it was like, I'm gonna try this really gnarly thing that I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready for it. I wasn't ready for it, by the way. Uh, so that's like one of the only things that I've done that was like on a trail thing that was like about me. Uh, I've had some really great feedback and feedback isn't always someone leaving me a comment or someone, you know, telling me something in person. But I've, I mean, like I've had, I haven't gotten very much feedback at all over the course of how many videos I've made, which by now is like almost 200. I haven't gotten a lot of feedback on, oh, you could do this better, or I really like this, that was great, or like, thank you so much. Like, I've had a little bit of that. I haven't had a lot of people ask questions, I haven't had much engagement, and I do want that. If I'm gonna put it out there, I want a, a, a connection, and Laura Lee and I talked about that in like the second, I think, conversation I ever had on, on here um, about connection and why I'm even doing what I'm doing now and why I strive for connection and what I like about it and what that means to me and stuff. Anyway, but I mean, uh, I've had one person, like, I was riding my bike, I was going towards the trail, and someone was on their bike, and they chased me down on their bike. They were not going in my direction at first. And they were, like recognized me from the YouTube videos, and I asked them, like, how did you find them? And they said that they just looked up, like, Lethbridge mountain bike trails or something in YouTube, and they found them. And they were like, oh yeah, man, like, it's super cool, and like, we talked for a good, like, half hour just on the street um, about it, and like, they were talking about, like, yeah, they're getting back into biking again and stuff, and and how, whatever, even, even it was also, like, you don't get to see a lot of me and my full physique in these videos. I, like, sometimes turn the camera at me a little bit from time to time, but it's rare in the mountain bike videos. Uh, so you don't get to see, like, I'm, like, this way bigger guy and stuff, right? But in person, he even made that comment, like, yeah, we're, like, both kind of bigger guys, and we're, like, out there, it's, it's cool to see someone else, like, you know, just out there, just biking, just for the fun of it, just for the joy of it, whatever. And, like, of course, that made me feel good. That was a very positive interaction. Um, I never thought that would happen. Someone else months later reached out over Instagram and said, Hey, I found your YouTube videos. They messaged me through my FK Arts Instagram and, and they were just like, you know, I, I've lived here for a little bit now. I only went on like one ride. I'm just kind of like, I don't know what to do or where to go. Like, would you want to go riding with me sometime? Uh, we did go out on a ride. We'll probably go to another ride again. And 
that like this is stuff I never thought would happen. But I'm like, wow, like that's great. I thought I was just sharing it with people that knew who I was. They get to see the beauty of Lethbridge. And then it turned into this whole thing where it's like, oh no, like people are actually looking for trails and they're finding my videos. And there, through there, they can, like I have links to my Strava and to my trail forks, rides. Um, when I started biking here, I went to Reddit and I was asking, is there anywhere that I can find trails? How do I find the trails? Like I'm so new, I went one time, I went because I saw a trail, which is a trail by the university. It was so, like it was my very first ride. It was so far above anything I was capable of doing that it really discouraged me. And I was just like, there has to be somewhere where there's trails listed. There just has to be. I had people responding to me and I even emailed someone specifically. It was like, hey, um, I know you've got this mountain bike club thing that you do, whatever. I'm not really interested in that uh, at all. But is there a way, like, is there somewhere that I can see the trails that Lethbridge has? They completely ignored the fact that I didn't want to join their mountain bike group uh, and didn't tell me that Trail Forks is a thing. And I thought that was interesting. Um, the reason I didn't want to be part of a, a mountain bike group is because part of the reason I ride my bike and love riding my bike is because I'm very anxious. I don't like meeting new people. Um, I do it when I have to do it. I'm really bad at networking. I don't want to go meet a group of new riders, when I, especially because I have no confidence in biking right now, in mountain biking, or last year when I started. I have way more confidence now and can, you know, whatever, meet up with people or ride with people with way more confidence. <coughs> but, um, yeah, so that wasn't very helpful. Uh, eventually someone on Reddit was like, oh, there's this app called Trail Forks. And I was like, hell yeah, there is. Um, and so I got to learn some of the trails through there. So anyway, I, I post, you know, my trail forks information. There, there's like, uh, there's that and, and whatever. People are finding it useful in ways that I never thought that they would, which is great. And again, this is all getting towards this one comment that somebody made, which I should have in retrospect screenshot it, but we'll get to that, um, as to why I can't even look it up anymore. So I, yeah. That, I'm focusing on the mountain bike videos again because this is a comment about the mountain bike videos. Uh, I've had those two interactions with people. Uh, one of them, like I said, just chased me down like face to face. The other person messaged me on Instagram. We got together and rode a trail together. So I'm like, that's super cool. When I reflect, like I didn't intend to help people that were in the same position as me. And it is helping people that might have been in the same position as me. They didn't know where to start. Where do I mountain bike in Lethbridge? I don't even know. And now, that, now that's something that people are searching and they're finding it and that's awesome. I love that. Um, because it's not about, look at how gnarly I am at riding trails. That's not what it's about. Anyway, uh, this is supposed to be about criticism in general. So before I get to that main thing that sparks this, I mean, I had someone, a friend criticize me, uh, maybe not criticize me, comment about how I was making so many videos they couldn't watch any of them. They couldn't watch any of them. They were too overwhelmed because there was a little point where I went bananas and I had the time and I, I made the time where I, there's like two weeks or something where I put out a video almost every day. And that's because I have a bunch of different videos that I make, right? Like the vlog is a weekly thing. The conversation is a weekly thing. When I was doing the rants, they were a weekly thing. If I made an art piece, that would have been a thing. If I wrote a trail, that would have been a thing. If I did a review, that would have been another thing. Um, I could ride more than one trail in a week. I could make more than one art piece in a week. And if I filmed it and edited it and put it up, and there you go. That's how I ended up getting like all these different videos in a week. I mean, this too, behind the curtain. It's rare that I put one of these up because it doesn't just it doesn't happen very often. But that's another segment that I do. So um, I just, I was like kind of upset because I was like, that's dumb. Like, you're not watching any of them because I have too many. Well, no one expected you to watch any of them just because you're a friend of mine. Um, you watch the ones that are interested that you're interested in and that's it. I don't even expect my own mother to watch all of them if she doesn't need to see the art process video that I make. I mean, some people really enjoy that. Like I said, they sit down, they watch it because they brought the piece, they like it. Um, yeah, I don't expect people, like you watch what you're interested in, that's it. I appreciate any support that someone gives me in any way, whether it's a comment or a, a, a like or just someone watching it and enjoying it and I don't even get any feedback or whatever. Um, but. So that was one of the criticisms I got early on. And, you know, since then there's been a couple things here and there, but not a lot um, on Reddit. I, I post to Reddit with biking videos, with sometimes art process videos, and with reviews. And that's about it, because I do want to reach, reach a wider audience. Not to become famous, not to make money, 
because I, that's just not going to happen with the content that I create. It's just not really going to happen. Um, my vlogs aren't really funny. I'm not interacting with different people in my vlogs is one reason. And uh, this is because I'm not around a lot of people and I'm not doing a lot of crazy stuff. Um, so it's just not something that I, you know, it, it's, it's just, it is, it is what it is. I hate when people say that. But I mean, that's not its purpose. Like, I, I know that it's not super, super engaging for a lot of people. You have to be really interested in who I am and what I'm doing to end up watching those and finding them even vaguely interesting. Um, or wanting to hear my thoughts on stuff, like in a conversation. So, I know that it's not going to reach a lot of people. I don't have that expectation. I never did. If people did get into it that were strangers and whatever, and it gained momentum and whatever, that would be great. I, that would, I would love that. That would be fantastic. But that's not what I'm looking for, and it's not what I'm aspiring to, to do, or inspiring to be, or, or, like, it's not something I think is going to happen. So, I've gotten some review, or some, some criticisms on uh, reviews that I've had, which were interesting, and it just, it, I mean, this is a couple weeks ago, so when Slipknot put out the new album, We Are Not Your Kind, I had a pretty negative review that was just like, I called it lazy. I called the album lazy. I posted it in the Slipknot subreddit. I got a lot of flack for it. Uh, but it was interesting because I, I'm just, I got to experience like, people didn't watch all of it, obviously. Some people didn't even watch half of it and it was very obvious with their comments. And it was like, I, I'm a fan, like, and I'm, I'm saying that I thought the album was lazy. I was comparing it to other albums. I was saying that I would even listen to this album more than I would listen to my favorite albums because the other albums were so good at expressing what they were trying to express, which was pain, that it's really difficult for me to listen to them. And I was like, this album has some really good songs on here still, but as a whole, it's kind of, I'm not gonna redo the review right now. <laughs> the point is that a lot of people didn't even watch the video for more than a minute or two before they said something negative about it or me. Like, well, how many, how, I, I should I should have gone back and, and, and looked at the comments and repeated them. Uh, but some people were just like, oh yeah, I, I'm sure that you've had a number one album or whatever, like criticizing me that because I am not at their level that I can't have my own opinions about it, which is obviously super dumb. Um, that means like, oh, well you can't have a good opinion of it either then, because who are you? You don't have, you're not, you haven't had the decades of experience in the music business performing and writing music and whatever. I haven't had decades of it either. And even if I wasn't an artist, writer, performer, musician, which I, whatever, if I wasn't active in bands and stuff at any point ever, and I'm just a fan, I would still have just as much right to criticize, to talk about it, to review it, whatever. Um, I got one person who had legitimate constructive criticism, and I was like, thank you, this is constructive criticism. This is something that, yes, I know that sometimes I'm very unprepared, it's part of my style, but it's also because I just don't want to spend, it's part of my style because I don't like doing research, I don't like writing things down, I don't like taking a long time to prepare. I need to do that more with some things because I do want to get better to some degree with the content I produce. Um, let's just go down to today's, today's thing. So I posted a mountain bike video two days ago, I think. Uh, it was like a half hour long, or it was between 20 minutes and a half hour, I don't really remember, but it was a longer one. And it's because I linked all, like a bunch of trails together. So I don't, especially when it's long, I don't expect people to watch it. Um, I post these on, on these subreddits, uh, a bunch of mountain bike related ones, some GoPro and action cam related ones. And I just put the video there and that's it, I just put it up. And sometimes it generates that a video gets like 150 views or something, or, or a little bit more than that, I think, on one of them. And some people are like, oh, that's a really cool place. Like, that's, that's, or some people are like, I didn't even know, like I was in Lethbridge a couple months ago, I didn't even know they had trails. Um, so it's weird that some people that, yeah, they just find them there and they're like, they, they have a relationship to it. You know, if, if you're not interested in it, don't watch it. Like, I don't claim to be like this all-star. I'm not, I, it just says the name of the trail and it says like beautiful Lethbridge trail or whatever. It has nothing to be like, oh, watch me like rip this trail. Um, it, it's just not anything I advertise because I don't do that. And so, anyway, um, I post, I just post it, post it, post it. Like in one day, it takes like two seconds to copy and paste the link. I post it to MTV, I post it to Mountain Bike, I post it to Cycling, I post it to Bicycle, whatever. I post it to MTV Videos, I post it to GoPro, to Action Cam. It, it, yeah. And 
I haven't really had any negative criticism or real criticism at all because it just wasn't, I don't know. Someone was like, man, this music doesn't really match up. Like, this music should be reserved for, like, really gnarly writing and stuff. I don't know why you'd use it. I was like, hey, whatever. Like, there's no point in responding to that. I woke up this morning. Like, I posted this video two days ago. I didn't think it was going to get watched very much at all, and it hasn't because it's very long. So, to, in my mind, I was thinking, like, if someone wants to know how to link these trails together... I mean, you could just use trail forks or whatever. I find, like, the video thing, if you have a good memory for visuals, is really great. So that way, when you're on the trail, you don't have to stop and look at your trail forks app and be like, where am I? Where does this thing go? It's useful for people who are here that want to know how to link those trails together and the possibilities of how you can go from here to here and you don't have to just ride one trail and go back up to the city and call it a day. I love linking trails together. I love longer rides. When I'm having an, uh, any type, of, even if I'm having a bad day, I mean, like as long as the weather is good and that's not a thing, I want to be on my bike and specifically on trails for a long time, as long as I can physically do that. Um, so that was the reason I was like, I debated, like, I could just post like the one trail and that's it, because one of them was new that I'd never been on, the very first one. And I was like, the other ones people have seen, but they haven't seen me link them together, I'll do that. So I don't have the exact comment there. Uh, anymore, but I mean, someone had had commented this morning on the mountain bike subreddit, MTB R M T B, and it just said, it wasn't the word wasn't famous, but it was it was a synonym. It was very similar. It was like, oh yeah, maybe I'll just spam seven different subreddits and I'll be YouTube famous too. Like they were saying it like really sarcastically. Like I thought that was my intention, and I was like, I, I could have chose to not engage. <laughs> Um, which I need to do more often. But this is why this is going to relate to the conversation piece that I'm going to have for this week too, which is like on Justice Complex. Because I don't like when people get away with things. Certain things, obviously. I'm going to go into way more depth of the whole Justice Complex thing and how I don't like when people get away with stuff in the conversation video uh, that I'm going to have in a, like tomorrow, I guess. Um... <clears throat> So I'm not going to delve into a lot of those specifics right now. But this guy with his assumptions and whatever else, I was just like, what is your deal? Like, did I say that I wanted YouTube fame? Did I say that's why I was posting these videos? And I'm not, sp like, spamming these. Like, I I'm, they're all relevant subreddits. I put one, one link in each subreddit. The people in those subreddits only saw the link one time. Now, if you happen to look at all these different subreddits, you would see it over and over again if you're in like four or five different biking ones. Um, but I know if, for sure that he just went and looked, because you can do that on Reddit, look at the places I've commented, look at the places I posted or whatever, and follow those things. And you can see everywhere that I've had that type of uh, action. Um, and then that's the thing. He went and commented on like an art process video where someone said like, oh yeah, you're not allowed to post that here. Or maybe it was a podcast one, but they were just like, you're not, you're not allowed to post that thing in here. And then he just went and commented on that, even though it was like a month old, and was like, yo, yeah, all you do is spam stuff, uh, which is great criticism. Like, I knew right away when I looked at the stuff, I'm like, you're just trolling, like, you're just an idiot, like, obviously, and I should just ignore that. But again, there was this part of me that was like, that, did I ever say that I was trying to do this for fame? And I mentioned, I was like, that's not why I do this. I'm like, I, I never, I don't remember everything I said. I can't look at the conversation anymore. Um, but I, I, I did respond and I said, like, I, that's not what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm not posting to get famous or, or whatever from this. Uh, some people have actually, you know, seen it, enjoyed it. And he was like, yeah, maybe you should get, and he replied again. He was like, well, maybe you should get the hint when tens of thousands of people go past your video and you don't have any likes. And it's like, well okay, people don't want to watch the video, people didn't, like, give it an upvote, uh, that's fine. There are other videos, though, that have actually positive comments on Reddit. Obviously, you're not talking about those ones. I don't know why, like, I know what I know, and, and either you've looked at those and you just don't want to acknowledge them, but I, don't, I, I didn't, like, the part of me wanted to be like, no, look at this and look at this and look at this. There's a whole bunch of upvotes. And there's people saying, like, oh, wow, like, that's really cool. Like, I like that. That's a gnarly little trail. That's a fun little, looks like that was a fun ride. Like, those comments are there. Like, that happens. It's not like it never happens. I didn't do that. I just ended up in, like, I just, there was, 
I only said two things in response. And that first one was there. And then, uh, yeah, I ended up just saying, thanks for the constructive criticism. Uh, enjoy Reddit. I think that was it. I was like, thanks for the constructive criticism. Keep enjoying Reddit or something with like a, like one of those, one a piece, a piece out. And that was it. And then I was just like, man, this guy, I, I just looking at everything else that he commented, like 90% of his comments on other people's stuff is all just trolling and just like, you're an idiot, why would you do that? Like, he was on like, ra like he was super racist on some threads. Um, he was just really just negative about so many things, being like, you're an idiot, like that's not actually the name of that part, like on a lot of mountain bike stuff, being like, yeah, why? that's not the name of that thing, this is... Well, you explained that wrong. Like it was all just like sentences like that. He did. He never even offered like that's not how you do that. This is actually how you do that. There was nothing constructive or or positive about anything that he. Like I said, criticism can be super positive. Can be great. Uh, but there was nothing about anything he said that was ever positive or constructive at all. So I was just like, you know what? He comments on mountain bike stuff a lot. He's obviously in there, and he only. This is the first time he's ever said anything about my stuff. But I'm going to keep posting there, so he's going to keep saying stuff. And I just, like, went and I blocked him. So that's why I can't... I, I, I don't have access anymore to even see his username. Like, I can't go back and unblock him, like, at all. I can't see anything he's posted. I can't see the comments he had on that thread anymore. It says, like, there's four comments, and I can only see my two. Um, so I, yeah, I did that, and, and that was it. But I was just thinking about it and realizing... That I'm like, man, like, it, it does get under my skin. Not because it's negative. Like I said, there was constructive criticism about negative things I did. Um, oh, sorry. There's another thing he mentioned. In that one thing where he was like, well, yeah. Uh, he, where he talked about... Oh, I don't even remember what the second comment was. that I And I know I already said half of it. But the other half of it that I didn't say was that he was also saying, like, yeah, maybe I would spend more time... Uh, like spend more time getting better like being better at videos and getting better than spamming like these accounts and trying to uh whatever because you think you would get the hint that you need to get better when people don't like your stuff and i was like that's again this goes back to like the intention and purpose i am not trying like if let's say all i did was post mountain bike videos and that that was my job or something or like that i you know, I would obviously research and get better at editing and like find different music and whatever. It takes a lot of time to do that stuff. I got to a point where I like, I didn't plateau with my ability. I plateaued with my desire <laughs> to, to get better at this point because it will take time and energy that I don't want to invest right now in bringing it up another level. There's little things I want to change, little things I do change from time to time uh, to make things better while I'm editing or, or what have you. But it's not something that I want to take a lot of time. I want to just put it out there. I put music there because it's more palatable to some for someone to watch it than just hear me heavy breathing the whole time. I'm not talking during those rides, really. So, yeah, it was just like... I, and I could have said all this stuff, and I wanted to. But that's the thing. It got under my skin, not because it was negative criticism, because it was stupid criticism. It was not... It was not there was no critical thinking involved. It was just him wanting to get a rise out of me. That's all I can... Or just him trying to feel better about himself or whatever. And it does get to me. Because I'm like, that's not the truth. Like, you're... One, you're completely misinterpreting my intentions on what I do what I do. On why I do what I do. I... I... I, I don't know. I feel defensive. Because I'm like, I don't... No, I'm not great at editing. I'm not great at recording. I'm not great at mountain biking. I'm not... I don't claim to be any of those things either. I'm trying to get it to a point where it's watchable... And trying to do what I can. And I spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and so many hours at the very beginning trying to fix the quality of videos and stuff. I almost just like rage quit vlogging altogether over it, uh, which I talked about early on. Like, um, yeah, it's it's not, I don't know, like I said, it's not because I think that I'm super great that it, it, it pisses me off. I get upset because they're just unfounded, stupid, like I said, like whatever. He achieved his purpose. I don't think I let him know that. But I mean, this was partly wanting to examine why do I feel this way and how to not feel this way. And it's really difficult. And it relates to this whole justice complex thing. I hate when people just get away with stuff. Even if it's just saying stuff. Then I'm like, no, that's not it. Like, that's not it at all. This is not... That doesn't... That's not me. That doesn't... That's not how I think about what I'm doing. That's not what I'm trying to do. Blah, 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 blah. And I know that if I continue to say all that, it's not like he would be like, oh, okay, I, I didn't understand. 
that wouldn't have happened. Like, 99.9% sure that would not have happened. I didn't give him the opportunity. I decided to not engage anymore. But I'm really bad for... I'm getting better at not engaging with people online uh, when it comes to things like that. But I just don't like when people... I don't know. It's just difficult. I don't know. And that's the thing. Like, I spent most of this time not talking about how I'm going to deal with it, but more of just, like, giving you background on my intention and purpose and why, whatever. I, I just, like, ugh. I, it's just that response, which is, to some people, going to be ironic, the response to, like, falsity and, and, like, truth or whatever. Like, I choose what I want people to... It's not like I've never lied uh, or misrepresented myself or whatever. But in obviously certain cases when other people are misre like if I'm feeling misrepresented by someone else or they think that I'm some way that I'm not and I want to correct them, then I want to correct them. Then it really irks me when I, I know I can't get through to that person and I'm also just like, but they're, the, the, yeah. <sighs> it, it, it comes with the territory, obviously. I just haven't had a lot of it yet. So I don't know if I had a lot of it, it would still bother me. I know that I just need to like, whatever, like it's, I need to just not argue. But the problem with not arguing is that then people assume that whatever they're saying is the truth sometimes because I'm not defending it. So they just assume that I'm, that that's it. Like it must be true. Um, and so like, that's the thing with those, you know, comments about the review I did on the new Slipknot album, I did talk i did respond to a couple people being like you obviously didn't watch this like that's not all that i said i ended up saying this as well i ended up saying this but i ended up you know and and then there usually wasn't a response because then yeah they realized they hadn't watched it at all um and then like i praised the person who actually gave me real constructive criticism and i even said like this this is how you criticize somebody like this is how you give genuine positive like this is negative feedback that is positive for me um, if your purpose is to actually assist and not just be like, you're an idiot, like, I, I don't know, I, this is super hypocritical probably, I mean, I, I call people idiots all the time, I just don't do it to them unless I'm going to actually educate them at the same time, and some people don't handle that very well either, some people don't handle criticism at all very well, I mean, I'm sure I've been guilty of that, not being able to handle criticism even if it is constructive and I just can't see it, this... Like, it didn't make me want to learn how to edit better. It didn't make me want... Like, there's nothing I can do differently that would change this person's opinion, and I don't care about their opinion. Really. But I there's that part of me that cares that they think something that isn't true about me. That's the thing. Because I didn't mislead them on purpose. Because if I'm misleading someone, I want them to believe something that isn't true that's different. If they just believe something that is not what I... Like, that's not who I'm presenting myself to be then obviously I don't, I don't like that. So how am I dealing with, with criticism and stuff like that? I haven't had the opportunity that often yet to deal with it. I'm trying to deal with it better than I was. It just, it like, I didn't throw off my whole day, but it did throw off my whole morning because I was thinking about it. And I was like, why don't I even respond? I shouldn't have let it, like, it shouldn't get to me at all. I, I could have not responded or when I did respond and like, I, I disengaged really quickly and I, now I haven't seen any of the responses. Maybe they'll open up a new account just to, who knows? I have no idea. But like I said, I, by seeing the other activity, they're a complete troll and just an idiot and a really negative person, like way more than I am. Because uh, I don't seek out just like, oh, you're an idiot, uh, you suck, uh, you did that wrong. It's, you know, that's not what I do. And I don't like people that do it, obviously, not just when it comes to me, but I'm just like, what are you doing with your time? What constructive things are you doing? Why do you feel the need to do that? Obviously, it says something about them. Um, like I said, constructive criticism is super welcome. Uh... I, I, yeah, I want to get better at some stuff, but I also know that I'm not going to put the effort and time into doing certain things because it's just not enough value. I'm not going to get enough back from spending hours and hours trying to learn little tricks, and it might make the videos better, and I still don't think they're going to be watched a bunch because they're not those type of videos. Anyway, that was a really long-winded way of just, yeah... I don't know, it might be something I talk about more in the future and probably be way shorter, <laughs> but um, I just, yeah, again, that's just a reminder of my intention and purpose and why I'm doing what I'm doing, and also just kind of like, I, it still gets under my skin, I, because someone thinks something that isn't the truth, because they're thinking something that I'm trying to do something that I'm not, because, or just, or just like ignorant comments, just, they, they do get under my skin, they're just ignorant comments that have no real knowledge about what they're talking about they're they're criticizing me based off of nothing i mean it would piss me off if someone said an album sucked like 
and it does suck, but they don't tell me why it sucked. Like, if I agree that it sucks too, and like, if it's this uh, stupid piece of garbage, it's like they didn't even work on it at all. Like, I, I, like if you don't go into the reason, I just don't like that type of ignorance, I guess. It just really frustrates me. But I need to learn how to, like, especially when it's aimed at me, if it's something that increases and happens more and more, I need to be able to find a way to quickly move on and whatever, because talking about it is still upsetting me right now. I'm getting all worked up still just talking about it and thinking about it, and I need, I don't, I don't know what that is. More exposure is the only thing I can think of. More exposure to it hopefully will help me be like, yeah, okay, whatever, like, that's whatever. But I feel like I would be one of those people that will read every comment but that's because I get so few of them that I do read them. And then maybe maybe that's why. Maybe if there was hundreds and hundreds of comments, I couldn't even keep up with them. I couldn't even read them. Uh, that, that if I did select a few, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Maybe it always got under my skin. I'm too sensitive. I don't know. But that's that's it. That's, see you on another time.